Hey friends, how you doing? This is a series on how to build or how to create a website using Zola. And in the previous part, there is the first part. We saw what we want to do. That is, we want to build a website. And why did we choose Zola? That is the static site generator over traditional web technologies like WordPress, Django sites, etc. And in this part, we are actually going to see Zola in action. That is, we'll init a project and then use a theme inside it and see how exactly Zola fits into it and how Zola helps us. So to start with, we'll have to first install Zola. And to do that, the best way is to go to Zola.org, get Zola.org, that is the official documentation. Uh, the links will be there in the description itself. And you have to go to the docs and then to the installation part. And there you will see installation instructions based on your operating system and your distribution. So you can simply follow those instructions. And the simplest way we would suggest is to go to the GitHub release pages and download the binary based on your distribution and your operating system. If you have any issues or any questions to ask about installations and other things, you can do. You can mention them in the comments, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now we will go by the simplest way. That is, we will download the binary, which we have already downloaded. And after downloading the binary, you can add it to your path, and then you can directly use it as typing Zola and then the version. We already have it in our path, so we can directly use it. Or else you can directly enter the entire path. We have it in our user bin. So you can type like this user bin Zola and then use it. OK, now we have to start a new project. So we have to do is init. So Zola space init and the project name. In this case, it will be our website. That is the IT Gracie website. So IT Gracie, we can go with IT Gracie website. When you do in it, it asks you a few questions. That, that is, what is the URL of your site, the base URL? It can be anything. In our case, it is cdpsidgracy.com. It can be your own website as well. And it also asks us some other questions as well, like whether you want SAS compilation or no. We can leave it to default. That is, yes. It also asks you if you want syntax highlighting, if you want search index, and etc. We'll leave it to defaults and all the things. Now, what happens is all these uh, questions and the answers, they are customizable. They are changeable. You can change them later as well. So if you just see the structure that the init has built for us, it will be like this. You have different files, the config.toml and different folders as well. So the config.toml, if we just check, if you do config.toml, these are all the options that were asked when we did init. We can change them whenever we want. There are other options as well, which we'll be looking as we go ahead in this series. And you can also have a look if you want before and in the docs of the Zola as well. So these all are really customizable. And you can change them whenever you want. Now what we'll do is we'll actually see how the default or the uh, init structure looks like. For that, what you can do is we can do Zola serve. What this Zola surf does is it uh, builds your website, it compiles your website, and it serves it on localhost uh, 1111, that is four times one. So this is really helpful for you when you are developing website, like in this case. So you can live see your changes, as we don't have any templates or any anything at all in our uh, nav Zola code. You can see that Zola has by default uh, te a template page for us. You can see that it also mentions you are seeing this page because we couldn't find a template to render. And we can modify this page. We can create new index.html. We can change the theme. We can install a theme as well. And that's what we are going to do now, is install a theme. So uh, we'll start by installing a theme. And to install a theme, the link is given here. If we open that, it shows you how you can install a theme. You have to select a theme from the themes uh, link that they have and you can just clone it in the themes directory we saw that there was a directory in our website uh, structure themes and you just have to cd into themes and then you can 
clone the theme that you want. So we'll select a theme for us and we liked which one deep thought. Okay, we are going to use ah sorry, it's something else. You can choose whichever theme you yeah. want. Deep thought is the one that we like. You yeah. can go with others as well. Yep. And it has a GitHub link. You can just open that and they have the instructions here as well but the instruction in theme installation you can go to themes installing and using themes we saw that it was seeding into themes and then cloning the repository that you want so in our case it's deep thought i can just yep. copy this url or you can copy it from here as well copy it and then go to themes we are in themes directory and we can do hit clone and then paste the url this will clone uh, the theme directory uh, the deep thought directory directory into our themes themes folder and to use the theme like mentioned in the documentation for using a theme you have to um, set a theme variable in the configuration file to the name of the directory that you have inside themes folder so I'll just we'll go back a directory structure. We'll open the config dot toml file and we'll add a variable down here. No, not here, I guess it's at the top level to add it here. Theme equals to and we'll name it as deep thought. I guess this was the name that we had. If we see inside themes directory, deep thought and our config this is case sensitive so it should be exactly, exactly the same yep and it looks that we have it and if i now do serve to check whether our theme was installed it says that failed to render happened navbar's item ah okay to, to run that there are few instructions in github page you can check so what he says that you need to have navbar items in there are a few configuration items which you need to add into your config.toml and for now as an example we'll just copy this full thing and we'll These add it these are not required for everyone it depends on which theme you choose so each theme yep. will have its own uh, config options and other styles etc so yep. this is for the theme that we have chosen so as per the documentation maybe we can just try to copy it here and save it and we close and then sola serve okay item.code not found in context while rendering at index.html append okay. parent template let's just right. check code. the okay. github page once again so you don't add a default language to this array so I guess you need to have a language code. Now, but okay, not include here. Okay, so what happens is that we have added the navbar items, but we don't have a default language. And I think this the deep thought is a multilingual theme so that you can have multiple languages for your website in our case it's just in english for now so we can copy the full part and replace this thing with the english part and we'll delete french and spanish ones That's or we can it. even keep just for yeah. showing purpose as well now let's try again if it works zola serve Okay, that worked and now we can just reload this. Ah, Ta -da. cool. So we have the theme working. Do we have an example post? Okay, there is nothing in because we have not added any content to it. But this is how you get the themes working and in the future videos or in the next part we will try to configure all the options and add some contents so that our website looks uh, 
nice, I guess. Thank you.